Hello YouTube, this is Frugal. This is my first impressions look at the brand new Cytec X56 Rhino, the successor to their very successful X55 Rhino. Before we dive in, let's get the disclosure out of the way. Cytec sent me this unit for free for review. They did not tell me to make a video. They did not mandate that the video should have a certain tone. I'm free to do with it as I wish. At first glance, there's not really that much difference between the X56 and the previous version, the X55. The changes are all somewhat incremental and very subtle. First of all, on the joystick itself, you'll notice on the side here where the countermeasure switch was, there's now actually a joystick and it's a proper full axis joystick. Similarly, there's another joystick underneath your left thumb on the throttle quadrant right here. The reason Cytec added those two joysticks is to make it much easier to fly in space. Obviously we've got quite a growth right now in the popularity of space sims with Star Citizen and Elite Dangerous. Those two joysticks, which are completely independent axes of everything else, can be assigned to anything you like. So in Star Citizen, for example, I have this stick on the throttle controlling my up, down, left and right thrusters. This one on the stick I use to control forward and back movement. Also very, very handy in Elite Dangerous in the Galaxy map, particularly if you're using virtual reality. Reality, which was another focus of this redesign or update from Cytec. They wanted to make it more appropriate for use in a VR environment where you need more controls because you can't see your hands and you can't see a keyboard. That's really the purpose of these two joysticks. Other than that, the other changes that they've made are actually very subtle. First of all, the coloring. Notice that it's a blue color now instead of a kind of orange, amber, yellow that they had on the X55. Also, all the buttons and switches are backlit and you can completely customize the light that you have. Any of 256 different colors, which is kind of neat. Other subtle changes, down here on the throttle, the mode switch, which previously was only accessible through software, through Cytec's own software, now actually reports in Sims and in space games as an independent button. The button is always pressed, but you can assign this as a modifier. For example, in DCS World, you can assign a button as a modifier to modify what other buttons on the stick do. You can actually use that now without having to fire up Cytec's Rhino programming software. The Cytec programming suite is still the standard programming suite for this unit, same as it was on the X55. What other features do you have on these? Well, the rest of the buttons and the design is actually identical to the F55. So there is a rotary here, there's a rotary on the bottom of the throttle, there are two more rotaries on the base of the throttle here and here. The rotary on the top is also a button, the rotary on the bottom is also a button. There's a speed brake slider on the side of the throttle and then two eight-way digital hatches down the bottom. Not analog, those are digital like point of view hats down the bottom. On the joystick, we have the same design that we had on the X55. So three eight-way hats at the top of the joystick, a button on the right, a but two pinky buttons on the front of the joystick, here and a paddle, and then a single stage trigger. You also have a single thumb button underneath the hats at the top, and that's really it. The joystick itself is also twistable, meaning it can double up as a rudder if you want to use it in that way. Back over on the throttle, there are four toggle switches down the right hand side. Each switch is an independent button. So that would be button one, button two, three, and four. We also have three toggle switches down the bottom, one, two, and three, which again, in the up position and the down position are independent buttons. On the front of the throttles, we have two independent buttons here and a rocker, where each position of the rocker is an independent button once again. Now, just as with the X55, one of the key features of the X56 joystick is the spring at the bottom, which is interchangeable. They've made changing it a little bit tougher than it was on the X55. You still undo a collar here, lift the joystick up, and then there's a plastic sleeve that you need to pop off. This is actually quite easy to snap off in the 55. In the 56, it requires a huge amount of force to lift up. And at that point, you can take these two halves of the cover apart, take the spring out, and replace it with one of the three other springs that are included with the joystick. There were a lot of concerns in the community about the build quality of the X55. A lot of people have problems with throttle sticking or not working, joysticks breaking, and I understand from the community there have been some issues with these new joysticks on the side of the, jo of the joystick itself and on the side of the throttle quadrant that they can tend to drift. I haven't had any problems with drifting or anything like that, and my X55 is still my favorite joystick on HOTAS setup. However, I have this time around got some problems with the throttle, which are not huge, but bear them in mind. If you look here, it takes quite a bit of pressure 
to move that throttle even in its weakest setting. There's a ratchet on the left here where I can adjust the friction and it's actually at the lowest friction. I tend to find when I start flying with this, I need to work the throttle backwards and forwards quite a few times and then it loosens up. So it seems manufacturing quality levels at SciTech still maybe need a little bit of attention, but it's not a deal breaker. And finally, in the marketing blurb that SciTech are putting out about this new joystick, they're saying that the button positions are all offset to make it easier to find them in virtual reality. That's actually true, but it's not really a feature. It's the same design we had on the X55, where the buttons, as you can see on the side of the throttle here, are staggered, making it easy to find where they are. And similarly, if we look at the back of the joystick, you can see that the hat placements all the hats have a slightly different shape and tactile feel to them, and they are indeed slightly offset from one another, the same as they were on the 55. I haven't found any specific instances where buttons have been moved or changed in position to make it easier to find them in VR. It's just the design of the X55 and the X56 that they are fairly easy to find when using a virtual reality headset. So how is this to fly with? What is this like in use? Well, naturally I fired up Star Citizen and I fired up Elite Dangerous and tried out the new six axis controllers, these two joysticks on the side of the joystick and the throttle. It's actually very, very good. As I mentioned earlier, some users have reported that those joystick axes can drift over time. I've not had that problem, thankfully, and it was pretty darn awesome to be flying up, down, and sideways using those sticks with flight assist off in Elite Dangerous in order to pull off some funky maneuvers. Also, very, very cool to use those joysticks for precision maneuvering, such as when you're landing or taking off. I like the design of these new joysticks. However, they are pretty flimsy. The first time you start using them, they feel like they're gonna snap if you apply a little bit too much pressure. Thankfully, that hasn't happened, and I'm actually digging using them quite a lot. As with the X55, I am a big fan of the X56 joystick. It just is great because of the interchangeable spring. However, for me, I never actually changed the springs. The first thing I did when I got the X56 is do what I did with the X55. I changed the spring and put the lightest possible spring I could find in there, which makes this ideal for flying helicopters, just like its older brother. In fact, the joystick itself feels a lot smoother and a lot more fluid than the X55. Flying helicopters with this and doing precision maneuvers with a helicopter is absolutely not a problem. That said though, although the joystick feels a lot smoother, it's actually a lot more sensitive as well. So when I did the Tiger, DCS Tiger F5E video, first impressions, I was using this joystick and I had found rehearsing for that video that the, vi the joystick was actually too sensitive and the aircraft would roll or it would move or it would twitch without me really wanting it to just because the joystick was so sensitive. As a result, I did have to put dead zones into the sim around the pitch and the roll axis over here. No problems at all with the throttle other than that initial stickiness getting it to first work. So overall, my impressions, the X56 is evolutionary, not revolutionary. It doesn't do anything massively better than the X55, but it is a product that's been launched at the same price point as the X55, which is around $250. If you're into space simulators where you need those six degrees of control, the two extra joysticks I found are very, very welcome and a nice addition. The ability to customize the lights and the lighting effects on the X56 is a neat gimmick, but not one that I'm particularly fond of. I tend to set the colors to one color and forget about it and never touch it ever again. However, it is easy to reconfigure and a no-brainer even for somebody with very little experience. The controllers work just as well in flight simulation as the X55 did, and in fact, these new joysticks on the side of the joystick and the throttle actually come in pretty handy with some of the more complex aircraft in something like DCS World, where you have cameras and camera movement and scan zone movement and stuff like that. You can easily assign sensor control to those joysticks and move a scanning sensor or a seeker head. If you already have an X55, I gotta say I can't really see the benefit of upgrading to the 56 unless you really are a space sim nut or unless you are really craving having a few extra axes to control sensors in something like DCS World. If however you're looking for your first entry level HOTAS, I would actually say that this is a good choice. The build quality is not as out of this world as the Thrustmaster Warthog, but then neither is the price. This is under half the price of a Thrustmaster Warthog. That shows a little bit in terms of the materials they've used where the majority of the device is actually plastic compared to glass and steel on a higher-end Thrustmaster Warhawk. Now with all that said, 
SciTech have had some issues over the past year or so, both with build quality and fulfillment. I have spoken to SciTech in the past about that. They are aware of it and they are working to address it, but I think it would be remiss of me not to at least mention. I did get a lot of comments on the X55 video from people who were having problems with their hardware and couldn't contact SciTech support. Thankfully, I have very few problems with this other than the sticky throttle, which as I said earlier on, once you loosen it up, is absolutely fine. I hope that's the only problem I have. I haven't had any issues with the joystick drifting. I like this. I now no longer use my X55 and instead use this X56, particularly for flying helicopters. So that's it. That's my first impressions of the SciTech Rhino X56. There is a SciTech link in the show notes below. It is not sponsored. I don't get any kickback from it at all. As always, my name is Frugal. Thank you so very much for watching and until next time, I'll see you all very soon.